as Qin Shi Huangdi from China, it's all the same guy who keeps coming back to Earth, reincarnating over and over again. <clears throat> and if we go back to <clears throat> the two heads on the amazing lid of Palenque that we saw earlier, when we put the noses together, we see that one of the carvings in the tomb at Palenque had this mark on its nose, and that mark tells us how to put the transparencies together, how to break the code of the amazing lid of Palenque, that was the carving over the tomb of Lord Pekal at Palenque. And here we have it again, we have Lord Pekal facing each other, the two heads, there, there's one head with his mouth and his eye, the mirror image, his mouth and his eye, like that, and the bat covering them, which tells us that Lord Pekal designed the sun shield of Monte Olban. And if we move the transparencies again to this position, we see a small man exposing himself here with a cloak, going like that, and we see a bat underneath him. There's the bat. I've separated the two there. And this tells us that those who live a bad life will go the way of the bat, and the bat lives in darkness. And here we have th this arrangement here of squares, and what we see is 3 squared is 9 in the middle, 4 squared is 16, 9 times 16 is 144, and those are the ones who will go to heaven. So this tells us in the Bible, the book of Revelation, it tells us that those with 144,000 written on their foreheads will go to heaven. So we see in all of the artifacts from the Mayas, whether it's the mosaic mask of Palenque, which showed Lord Pekal with a small bird on his head, the bird of purification, bowing as the two stags, which was uh, the uh, mural of Bonham Pack with two sticks, and the two sticks they used to rub together to make fire, so that's why he was a god of fire. We haven't even started. Oh, yes, we did the, uh, excuse me, the, uh, this was one of the pictures you haven't seen from the, the, the mosaic mask of a snake with wings, the feathered snake, because they believe Quetzalcoatl was the feathered snake who lived on the earth, the snake, and in the heavens. Okay. Now, this is another one which I only decoded about a year ago. And uh, it's probably the most wonderful of all the pictures because it shows a soul actually going to heaven. Here we have an eagle, like a 747 aircraft, flying towards us. And he's got a bead in his mouth. And here we have one of the men from the tomb in Peru, a small man with a hat, I call him. And he's got a crab across his face. Remember. Viracocha was the foam of the sea, the guy who was not in the sea and he wasn't on the land. He was in the middle. He was in the foam of the sea. His name was Viracocha. Here we see Viracocha with his wings out going to heaven. And uh, we see a man here, that's his face red, with the compasses here of the Freemason, which tells us that when these two transparencies are placed 99.9 .9 degrees together, that says 99.9, .9, that says 99.9, .9, we come out with this composite picture here, which shows the man from Peru with a small hat that we saw earlier. And this tells us that the man in Palenque was the same man as the guy in Peru. So all of these ancient treasures, one, throughout history, there have been many incarnations of Jesus on earth. First of all, he started off in 2500 BC as Viracocha, foam of the sea, as, excuse me, as Krishna, Lord Krishna, the Christos. Then he came back as Tutankhamun, the son of God. Then he came back as Lord Buddha, the perfect one. Buddha and Krishna, well, Buddha was the next incarnation of Krishna. That's what the Hindu believe. Then he came back as Qin Shi Huangdi, the first emperor, who was the feathered snake. He was the sunspot cycle. It looks like a feathered snake. Then he came back as Jesus around the year zero. Then he came back as Lord Pekal, excuse me, as Viracocha around AD 300. Then he came back in Peru again as Viracocha Pachacamac in AD 500. Then he came back at Palenque in AD 750 as Lord Pekal. And throughout all of these incarnations, he encoded all of these secret pictures into his treasures to tell us how to get to heaven and how to escape going to hell when we die. And the messages of all of this stuff is that 
if we are pure and we can purify our spirit, we can increase the voltage of the soul inside our bodies so that when it's time for the body to die, the soul releases and escapes the earth's gravity and goes to heaven and becomes one with God. And God is electromagnetic energy. The Bible tells us that. God is light. So if we can increase the voltage of our soul by loving each other, then when the soul is released from the body, we'll go to heaven and we'll find peace again with God. If that doesn't happen, if we don't love our neighbor, then the soul will not reach the required voltage to leave the body. And it, when the, the soul leaves the body, it will attach itself to a developing, a new set of developing genes, whether it be a flower or a dog or a pig or a human being, commensurate with the voltage it generated during its last time, life, lifetime on Earth. So if when you're born, you're a real mean person, then you'll come back with a low voltage. And when your soul leaves your body when they put you in the coffin, you'll come back as a rat or a dog. You'll come back as a lower voltage creature. If you're a good dog, you'll, you'll, your voltage will increase. When, it, when that soul leaves the dog's body, it will come back as a chimpanzee, which is more intelligent. If you're a good chimpanzee, you'll come back as a human. If you're a good human, when your soul dies, you'll go back to God. If you're a bad human, you'll stay on the earth because you won't have enough voltage to escape and you'll come back as a lesser creature with a lesser voltage, a lesser voltage which is coming from all of the cells in your body put together. Now, as I say, this stuff takes about 18 hours and I've just been told I've got eight minutes left. So we've had terrific problems with the equipment today and I can only apologize about that. Uh, I think, as you know, Bob Brown isn't here, and Bob understands my requirements exactly. And it's, it, but they're having difficulties. But uh, it's very difficult to convey this stuff with high-tech equipment. All I want is a nice projector. That's all I need. Right? Once you start getting clever, you've got problems. Because God doesn't want us to be clever. He wants us to love each other. You see, when we love each other, the voltage of the soul gets greater and greater and greater. It's as simple as that. We're, we're electromagnetic energy. If when we start off, we start off as three volts from God, that the more we love, we get a halo. And it gets bigger and bigger and bigger with each incarnation until we've got so much light coming from us that we escape the Earth's gravity and we go to heaven and become one with God again. God is light. God is electromagnetic energy. But... Uh, the books are available, and I don't advertise because I think this work is meant for certain people, and those people will come across this work come what may. The website's up and running. It's, there's lots of stuff on there of, of a lot of interest, www.mauricecotterell.com. Uh, you can order the books from the American publishers or off the internet.